Welcome to Canine IQ Adult Education, where we teach people to teach their dogs. The course today is all about separation-related behaviour in dogs. My name is Claude Bertoni, and I'll be the instructor for this course. So what is separation-related behaviour? Separation-related behaviour can effectively be described as the extent or degree in which a dog displays its inability to deal with enforced isolation away from key pack or family members. So if we look at it from a dog's point of view, they look at us or they engage with us as if we're a surrogate pack. So the hierarchy of the pack is there to a degree, but effectively they want to be in and around our family dynamic or our pack dynamic. And we need to understand how we impact the dog going forward. So enforced isolation is effectively whenever the dog is not able to gain access to us. Now this is an important thing that we need to understand. A dog taking itself away from us isn't displaying signs of independence. It's just choosing to get away from us. It's when the dog is in a different location to us and then through either distance or physical structures or whatever impacts the dog getting access to us, that triggers a downstream effect of separation related behavior. And it's the extent of behavior that the dog shows when it's not able to get access to us that tells us just how bad the separation issues effectively have become in the dog. So separation related behavior also is a normal behavior and it occurs in all dogs to varying degrees. So this is important to note because it's not something that just happens out of the blue. It's perfectly normal. Dogs, all dogs, originally come from a wolf in terms of background and wolves are pack animals so everything that they do is all about being united with the greater pack and to be comfortable in that dynamic okay so separation related behavior is not created by dog owners contrary to what a lot of people tell you but we as dog owners can make the problem significantly worse by how we interact with our dogs so it's important to understand that how we spend time with the dogs and how we give them access to us and how we deal with them on a day-to-day -day basis will have an impact on them going forward. So how we live our daily lives directly affects how dogs deal with access to us and then their inability to be with us when we restrict access to them. And that is what causes separation related behavior going forward because unless we teach the dogs how to be independent and how to deal with the stress around separation issues, we never really address the behavior. So separation behavior can become a severe disorder if not dealt with at the earliest possible instance. And we'll go through this a bit later on when we talk about the causes and prompts. But effectively, separation related behavior is a silent killer for most dogs. It's a slippery slope from mild to extreme. And invariably, we don't know where the dogs are in that process until the dogs start exhibiting certain behaviors. So this course today has been designed with dog owners in mind as opposed to dog trainers where what I'm trying to do is to give everybody an understanding of what the triggers, the causes and the symptoms are with regards to separation related behavior, but more importantly, to give dog owners some really simple manageable tools to help deal with the problems attached with separation related behavior so that at the end of the day, the dogs are actually able to deal with the pressure and the stress that separation related behaviors develop but more importantly, develop an ability for the dogs to be independent and actually manage their time on their own so that the dependency issues in and around separation related behavior affect the dog significantly less. So thank you again for your support in purchasing this course. It's really appreciated and I hope you find the course beneficial.